Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you for being with us again on our Front Range Online. And I want to ask you tonight to find in your Bible 1 Chronicles chapter 4. 1 Chronicles chapter 4. Have you ever been known by a certain name or a nickname? Have you, have you ever been given a certain reputation that just kind of stuck with you? Maybe something that you were glad you had or maybe something you weren't so glad that you were given as a reputation or a name. Well, we're going to talk about somebody tonight who had a name and came to a place in their life where they did something about it. And I think you and I have an opportunity to learn from this picture of courage what it means to courageously and boldly ask God for the things that we need in a time of help. And uh, this is an important passage of Scripture. Several years ago, a, a guy by the name of David Wilkerson wrote a book about this particular character. And it really, I think prior to that, had you asked many Christians about this Bible character, many would have not had much to say or known very much about him at all. And yet there's only two verses in this man's whole biography. His life, his life is summed up in just two small verses. And yet this book was written, and there's some wonderful things in it, but I think some things perhaps have caused a little bit of imbalance in prayer and in other things that we expect from God. And tonight I just want to take a few minutes and look through this man's life. And I believe he's an Old Testament character that shows courageously how to go to God for time in a time of need for the help that we need. Let's look at 1 Chronicles chapter 4, right in the middle of all of these genealogies. We come to know a man by the name of Jabez. Look at verse 9. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bear him with sorrow. Now let me just say a few things right off the bat about verse 9. We, we get introduced to Jabez as a man who was more honorable than his brethren, and then we're told about his mother giving him his name. So God introduces us to a man who in his life had become more honorable than his brethren. He had honor. He had a good reputation. He had a good name. He was a man of honor. But his mother had given him the name of Jabez. Now, what does that mean? Well, the Bible tells us here, she said he had that name because I bear him with sorrow. Now, notice what the Bible brings attention here to the fact that Jabez was given a name associated with sorrow and pain and hardship that he brought into the life of his mother. Now, I don't know, and the Bible doesn't tell us, so we must not speculate on what this was this kind of pain and sorrow that Jabez uh, was born into or was born with, all we know is that Jabez was a man who was born into a time of sorrow and brought sorrow and pain into his mother's life. Whether it was at a time that she was going through difficult times of sorrow and pain, I don't know. But suffice it to say, this was a time of Jabez going into this family, coming into this family, and she said, I am giving him a name associated with sorrow. I think a good name for Jabez would be the man of sorrow. He would be a man of sorrow. And, and he is born of the tribe of Judah. Now, this is interesting because the tribe of Judah was a tribe that was a kingly tribe. There would have been a lot of people, a lot of men in this tribe who had been men of renown, men of royalty, men of leadership, men of quality. And then there's Jabez. Jabez was a man who was given a name and a label of being a man of sorrow. And yet in his life, he did honorable. In spite of the name that he was given, in spite of the pain that he came into, in spite of all the sorrow, he was a man who lived honorably and did more honorably than his brothers did. And this is a wonderful picture, I think, as we look forward to that great lion of the tribe of Judah, Jesus himself, who was called the man of sorrow, 
who was more honorable than his brethren, who had something about him, born into trial, born in a hard time, born in a very difficult time in Mary and Joseph's life, born into a difficult time in Israel's life, and yet Jesus lived honorably and humbly and perfectly in his days. But this is Jabez. Jabez, a man of sorrow. And I'm glad the Bible doesn't tell us what the sorrow was. Uh, sometimes we wonder, man, why didn't God get specific about that? Well, I'm glad he didn't because this is something that all of us can identify with Jabez in, that there's gonna be seasons of our life where we're gonna experience sorrow and pain and we, like Jabez, can go to God with it. Look at what he did in verse number 10. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldst bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that, mine, that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldst keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. Now notice his prayer ended with an exclamation point. This was an exclamation of his heart to God. Oh God, I would that you would bless me. I would that you would enlarge my, my coast. Oh God, I would pray that your hand would be with me and that, um, that you would keep me from evil. And it was a great explanation, a prayer that was passionate, from the heart, an exclamation of the heart, oh God, oh God. And Jabez prayed fervently and earnestly this prayer, oh God, oh God, I would that you would bless me. And I think that Jabez teaches us a wonderful lesson here tonight about coming boldly to the throne of God in the time of need to find mercy, to find grace, to find help. Aren't you glad that we have a God to go to? I think far too often, though, we're content to just pray dear God prayers instead of oh God prayers. And I think there was a time in some great Christians' lives where they came into this place of oh God prayers. Oh God, I've got to have you. God, I've got to, you've got to meet this need. Oh God, if you don't do this, it won't be done. And this is what Jabez is praying, a man of sorrow, a man who has a reputation, a man who has been associated with pain and grief and sorrow all of his life. And yet through all of that, he was more honorable. He lived an honorable life in spite of the reputation and the name that was given to him. Jabez persevered, but he came to a point where he said, my honorable life is not enough. I need God. I need God. And he prayed. And I believe that Jabez prayed for four things that we all can pray for and we ought to pray for ourselves. Now, I wanna just tell you right away that there have been some who have used this prayer as, some, as kind of a, a luck charm. We put this prayer on repeat, we rub it like a lucky rabbit's foot and we go to God and we just think God's gonna pour out all these great blessings on us and everything's gonna be fine. And I will tell you that God has ordained suffering. God has ordained some trials. God has told us clearly that we are gonna be people who are gonna suffer. We're gonna go through persecution. We're gonna go through trials. We're gonna have tribulation in this world and in this life, but we can be of good cheer. He's already overcome it. We can come to him and we can find grace. We can find mercy. We can find help. But not always does God just keep his people from all things painful and harmful. There's been some bad teaching and bad philosophy about that, some bad theology that's come out of this that says that, well, we just ought to pray and God will give us what we want and he'll do what we want. And that's not always the case. We, and by the way, we're not always praying for what we want. We should be praying for what he wants. Let thy will be done. I'm seeking your will. And that's what I believe Jabez was doing. I don't believe Jabez was self-seeking in this. God includes this. And God says, here was a man of sorrow. Here was a man who lived honorably. Here's a man who came to me earnestly and fervently and exclaimed from the heart his need and what he desired of me. And God said, I granted it for him. And I think we can learn some things. And I think there's some things that we ought to pray for that Jabez prayed for. Number one, I believe like Jabez, we ought to pray for the blessings of God. Look what Jabez said. He said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. Oh God, bless me. God, 
Bless me. I tell you that we need the blessing of God in our life. We need God's blessing, and God's blessing is not always material. God's blessing is very spiritual. God's blessing is a wonderful thing that God places in a person's life and the blessings of God. The Bible tells us um, the blessing of, of the Lord, it maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow with it. Now, he's not talking about rich the way this world defines rich. This world defines God's riches and God's blessing as cars, cash, castles, all these things. Let me tell you, that's not the way God blesses his people. God blesses his people with spiritual blessings. Now, thank God. God will provide our needs. God will provide the things that we need materially. I'm thankful for that. But God does greater than just material blessings. God blesses with spiritual blessings. You know, there was a time in my Christian life that I was afraid of procuring God's judgment or chastening in my life. And I think all of us ought to fear the Lord and know that God is a holy God and God chastens sin. And we ought, to be, we ought to be wary of that. But I will tell you that through my life, as I've grown to know more of the Lord and know more of his blessing, that I fear more losing the blessings of God than I do procuring the judgments of God. There's just something about God, the fear for me of God removing his hand of blessing. Oh, that God would bless me. That's what Jacob prayed when he wrestled with the angel of the Lord. Oh, God, bless me. God, bless me. And God blessed him abundantly and made his name Israel. And how did God bless him? He blessed Jacob with a broken thigh and he limped the rest of his life. But I'll tell you this, God changed the way Jacob walked and Jacob used to be able to walk in his strength and God took that strength and made Jacob learn to lean. And Jacob leaned upon his staff. He leaned upon the Lord and from that came great blessings. God knows how to bless his people. Sometimes what we think are times of sorrow and pain and trial are actually God's blessing in our life. And I can look back many times. I didn't enjoy going through it, but I look back now and I'm glad I did. God was blessing me often and I didn't know it. But that's what Jabez said. Jabez said, oh God, bless me. He knew that the God of Israel was the only source of all blessing. God is the fount of blessing. Come, Thou fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy praise. And so this is the great fountain of blessing and Jabez knew that. And we ought to be asking God for his blessing, asking God for his grace. This is all based on God's promise to Abraham. Jabez prayed this as a, as a prayer of faith based on the word of God. God, you promised Abraham and his descendants blessing. Come with me, Abram, out of the earth of Chaldees, and I will make you a blessing. And I will bless you, and I will bless him that blesses you. And so Jabez said, God, I'm part of that. God, I'm part of that. And I was born into sorrow. I was born into this pain. I was born into this situation. God, I'm going through these things in my life. Oh, God, bless me. Listen, whatever you're going through tonight, whatever's going on in your life, whatever circumstances you've come to, wherever you are on the road of life, you need the blessing of God and you need to pray, oh God, bless me. That's the first thing that he prayed for was the blessing of God. Number two, number two, he prayed for expansion of his property. Now, what does this mean? This is praying for God's blessing of prosperity in his life. He was praying that God would extend his coast, that God would extend his borders, that Jabez, it wasn't that he would just have more land, but that Jabez would have greater influence and greater effect. He was saying, God, increase my borders. Listen, Jabez was not just praying for God to give him more. He was praying that God would make him more. And there's a difference. There's a difference in being a person who is made to be more than a person who desires to have more. What good is it to have if, uh, if you aren't, don't have the character and possess the things that you need to be what God wants you to be? Much greater to be the person God wants you to be than to have all that God wants you to have. If I am who God wants me to be, then I'll be able to steward well the things God wants me to have. And this was Jabez. He was praying, really, this was a prayer for God's victory. This was a prayer for prosperity. This was a prayer that he said, Lord, I want you to put your hand 
on my life and increase my reach. Increase the blessings of my borders so that it's not just me that's a blessing, but all those in my borders are blessed and that I become a blessing. See, this is what God gave Abraham. God said, Abraham, come with me and I'll bless you, but I'll make you a blessing and you'll be a blessing to all those who bless you. That was God increasing his borders. I'm gonna take you out of the Ur of Chaldees. I'm gonna take you to the land that I'm gonna give you. And from that place, I'm gonna make you a blessing. And this is what Jabez prayed. And by the way, this should be our prayer. Lord, Lord, increase my influence and effectiveness for you. God, let my life extend to others the life of God. May the blessings of God in my life extend out further and farther than I could ever imagine. We ought to be praying that our reach would be extended, that our borders would be extended, that there would be more in our sphere of influence that would know more of God and have more from God and see more of God from our lives. That's what Jabez prayed, and I believe we can pray that prayer. Number three, number three, watch what he said. He said, verse number 10, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. We can pray that. And enlarge my coast. God, increase my reach. God, help me to have a greater influence on you, for you. And we can pray that. And then number three, that thine hand might be with me. This is a prayer for God's power. A God, give me your power. Put your hand with me. God, put your hand on my life. Give me your power. Give me your strength. Think about the hand of God. When we think about the hand of God through the Bible, we think about the hand of God in creation. We think about the hand of God in his sovereign will that the king's hand is in the heart, uh, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord and he, like the rivers of water, turns it wherever he will. God's hand is a hand of power and might. He measured out the heavens in the span of his hand. God holds the universe in his hand. He hollowed out all the oceans in the hollow of his hand. He holds all the oceans in that hand. It's a hand that is large. It's a hand that is powerful. It's a hand that is not shortened, that it cannot save. God can reach to the lowest and reach down into the uttermost and save all who would believe on him. The hand of God is always a picture of God's power and his strength. God's hand is God's protection and his power. And that's what I believe he was praying. He was saying, God, guide me. God, go with me. God, put your power on what happens in my life. God, give me your strength and your power and your ability. You know, there's an interesting story, and you can read about it in Joseph's life, where the Bible says that God put his hands on Joseph's hands. Joseph's hands became as the Lord's hands. I remember that vividly because I was in high school chapel many years ago when I was a teenager, and we had an old prison revivalist. Um, his name was Ron Garris. He was the director and the president of Rock of Ages Prison Ministry, and he'd come to preach for us. He was preaching in our, in our high school chapel. He called me out of my seat to use me as an illustration, said, here's Joseph, 17 years old. I was 17 when he said it. He said, Joseph was a goodly young man. Joseph was a man that God had blessed and God had put him in this land of Egypt and Joseph wanted to be used of God. And he said, and God put his hands on Joseph's hands. And I'll never forget, Brother Garris had me stand in front of the chapel and stretch my hands out like this. And he stood right behind me and he put his hands on my hands. And he grasped my hands like this from behind. And everywhere that he, that I moved my hands, his hands went with me. Everything that my hands would reach for and take, his hands would reach for and take. And uh, I'll never forget experiencing that by way of illustration of what God did with Joseph. And this is what Jabez was praying for. God, put your hand on me. God, give me your power. God, give me your blessing. God, I pray for your presence in all that I do, that where my hands go, your hands go. That what my hands hold, your hands hold. That I would hold on to these things and the strength and the power of your hands. For God, your hand is mighty. Your hand is powerful. Your hand is great. Your hand is wonderful. And he said, God, let that hand go with me. 
And I believe that he was saying, God, I want your presence in everything that I do. God, give me your presence and your power in all that I do. Wouldn't it be wonderful if God would just put his hand in your marriage? Wouldn't it be wonderful if God would just have his hand in the way you raise your children? Wouldn't it be wonderful that whatever you put your hand to, God would put his hand to, and you would do it in his strength? You would do it in his might. You would do it in his will. You would do it with his blessing. You would do it with his reach. Wouldn't it be wonderful to know that God is with you just like that? The Lord is at hand. He's right here. Where my hand is, is his hand is. What my hand reaches for, his hand reaches for. What my hand is put to, God puts his hand to. I'll tell you, we'd accomplish more. We would go further. We would get more done. We would know the joy and the presence of God in the journey. We could say like Paul, when we're all alone in the prison, the Lord is at hand. God's hand was with him. God's hand was with him. He said, listen, I don't worry. My God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Paul didn't have a thing to worry about because the hand of God was on his hands. And that's what we all should pray for. Oh God, oh God, put your hand in my life. And then let me say number four. Notice what he said, verse number 10. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. We can pray that. God, bless me. Put your blessing in in my life. Number two, oh God, that you would enlarge my coast. Father, give me strength or give me reach and influence beyond my, my borders. God, expand my, uh, my influence and my reach for you. Number three, he said, Lord, that thou wouldest uh, uh, enlarge my coast and that thine hand might be with me. God, put your power, put your presence, be with me with you. I want you with me. All of your person, all of your presence, and all of your power right here with me. And then he said this, and he said, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. Keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. This is a protection, a prayer of protection. God, protect me. Now, this is what Jesus taught us to pray. When he said, after this manner, pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those that are indebted to us. And Lord, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. This is what the Lord taught us to pray. Deliver us from evil. This is what Jabez prayed. Oh God, deliver me from evil, keep me, guard me, protect me from evil, that it wouldn't grieve me, that it wouldn't crush me, that it wouldn't, it wouldn't hinder me. You know, there's a lot of evil in this world. The devil is the evil one. He is out to seek to devour. Evil in the Bible uh, always means to intentionally injure. It's, it's a uh, intentional harm and injury. That's what evil is. Evil is one that uh, an evil one is one who sets about intentionally to hurt others. That's why the Bible calls the devil the evil one. He's a devourer. He is uh, a serpent that comes in to bite and harm. He's the thief who comes to steal and kill and to destroy. Uh, he is the accuser of the brethren. He is the deceiver of the nations. I mean, this is, this is who he is. He's evil in what he does. His intent is to injure and harm and to destroy. And he's the sifter. All those things that Satan does, he is the evil one. And this is what Jabez prayed. Lord, I'm in a world of evil that wants to harm me, that wants to hurt me, that wants to crush me. And Lord, there's enough evil to come against me in this world. Evil is sufficient for the day thereof. Today is sufficient. There's enough evil in this world today to crush me. God, keep me from that evil. God, protect me today. Put that hedge of protection about me. Put your armor about me. Keep me strong in the Lord. And God, I am looking to you as my defender. I am looking to you as my strong tower. I am looking to you as my buckler and my shield and my defense. Oh God, I'm looking to you. I want to stay behind your protection. I don't want to get outside the way. I want to stay close enough to you to know that you are my defender. And oh, what a joy that Jabez had confidence in God as his protector. I'm thankful today that we have the same promise that the Lord promised to protect us, that no matter what we're going through,
He'll go in there with us. And listen, even if what I'm going through now would, would, would result ultimately in my death, I could fear no evil for thou art with me. Even to the point of death, we say, I can fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Listen, this is what Jabez prayed. And I believe all of us ought to sit up tonight and take notice that we ought to pray this way. Oh God, oh God, earnestly, fervently coming before God. God, I need your blessing. I need your blessing in my life. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord and walketh in his ways. And for thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. I think this is Jabez saying, God, I'm coming to you in the fear of the Lord. Put your blessing on me. God bless me today. And he knew the blessing of God. And then he prayed that God would enlarge his influence. He prays that God would extend his borders, that God would expand his life, that he would be a blessing, that the blessings of God in his life would be to more than just himself, but beyond himself. And oh, that God would use us that way. And then he prayed for God to, uh, to, to put his power and his presence in his life. God, go with me. God, be with me. God, strengthen me. God, use me. Give me your power. And then, oh God, keep me from evil that I'm not grieved by. You know, can I tell you today, church, this is one of the things I think the devil has been successful at. He gets us looking at all the evil of the world and we get our eyes off of God. And we see all the things that are going on in this world and we, we fail to see the goodness of God. David said, I had fainted in the land of the living unless I had believed to see the goodness of God. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of God. And I tell you, you need to look for it. Jabez prayed for it. He prayed earnestly, oh God, keep me from it. Don't let the evil that's in this world crush me and grieve me and keep me from being the blessing that you want me to be. This is exactly how Jesus taught us to pray. Father, 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 I surrender to your will. I hallow your name. I want your kingdom to come. Lord, I want what I'm doing to be beyond my borders. I want, I want my life to be a blessing to others. And then God, I need your power. I need your protection. I need you to keep me from evil. For thine is the power and the glory and uh, the blessing forever and ever and ever. Amen. That's what Jabez prayed. And I believe that Jabez's goal when he was praying was uh, not to just live a sorrow-free life, but to live a life in the blessings of God. It wasn't just a life to have more, but it was a, it was a prayer to be more for God. It wasn't just a prayer um, for, uh, for God's uh, uh, blessing in his life, but oh God, that my life would mean so much more and that it would be done not in my strength, but in your strength. And God, that I would be an overcomer. I would be an overcomer. I wouldn't be conquered, but I would live as more than a conqueror. That I could say with Paul, thanks be unto God, which causeth us always to triumph in Christ. And I think we ought to, I think we ought to pray. Now, Jabez's prayer is not a prayer to just put on repeat and just some vain repetition that we say before God so that we can have more things. No, I believe his prayer is a call to people who are not praying. It's a call to the prayerless. It's a call to those who are in burden. It's a call to those who are in pain. It's a call to those who are in need. You need to turn to God, come to him with it, lay it before him, and, it, and bring it with all your heart fervently, and God will do it. What a blessing it is. What a courageous thing to come boldly before the throne. May we come boldly like Jabez. Father, I pray you'll speak to our hearts tonight. Use this message to strengthen your people. God bless in every way as we pray these prayers that we would see your hand in our life. And we pray this in Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you, church.